This video was sponsored by Envato. I don't think there's a single more requested video than a shadow tutorial. I've done some highlights tutorials, I've done a glow tutorial, but you guys just cannot stop asking me for a shadow one, so I guess here we are. All the assets I'm gonna use today are from Envato Elements, the sponsor of today's video. If you wanna check them out, they're down below in the description. More on them later though. For now, let's get straight into the first example. For today's first example, let's begin simple. This right here is a marble table and this is a bowl. I know, crazy stuff. And I would like to place this bowl just over here. This looks very fake because we don't have any shadows whatsoever. What you first have to understand, I chose these images because they have very neutral lighting. That is important to know. There is no hard sunlight or something. Now, the first step I like to do is add an adjustment layer, in this case, exposure. You can also find that down here. And we're going to put that below the bowl, of course. Then if you decrease the exposure, you make a very dark layer, essentially. You can also play around with the gamma to make it just slightly more contrastful but something like this should be fine where it's almost completely black then i'll invert the mask using ctrl or command i i will grab a brush and right click to edit that brush we're going to make that uh, slightly bigger maybe about this size you can do this by the way by holding alt hold your right click and move to the sides also want to make sure the hardness is on zero and we can kind of make this go flatter like so that creates a nice round flat brush you can tell on the bowl this side is slightly lighter than this side so we can assume that there's a very subtle light coming from the left in this case with that in mind let's go ahead and decrease the flow up here to something very low like maybe eight and just by clicking on it making it smaller clicking again making it bigger click again and we want to lean slightly to the right because as we know the light comes from the left so just by clicking very subtly not too much you can kind of create a shadow and be sure to make it darker the closer it gets to the subject essentially where it touches the bowl that's where you want it to be super duper dark and the reason the shadow has to look so soft is because the lighting is soft if this was sunlight you'd see a very sharp edge around the shadow as you can tell this already looks a lot better then we can do the same thing another adjustment layer this time we'll clip it to the bowl by holding alt and clicking in between in the two layers in between in the two layer english do the same thing just a little bit darker like so select the mask inverted with ctrl i and now with just a regular round brush we can paint the same kind of thing except this time on top of the bowl just very softly down here because as you know the light isn't really gonna hit that part of the bowl be sure to be subtle with it however you don't want to overdo this because it will end up looking very very strange just something subtle like this is absolutely fine so here we have before and after now say we have a background that has direct harsh lighting like can tell this image has that by the very dark edges around the the bricks as you can tell over here there are some dents they are very dark and very sharp so the process is very similar again exposure make that darker invert the mask this time however we want to have a hard brush so let's increase the hardness to something higher closer to 90 percent again we'll make it flat because of the angle and this time we want to make sure the base of the bowl ends there and simply click a few times like so i accidentally put it on top of the bowl here you go you can always enhance that slightly with a darker brush underneath for example the base of the shadow can be a bit darker than the rest you can even decide to slightly fade it out at the end and also once again we're going to need that shadow on the bowl itself and this shadow also is a lot sharper than the previous one and after some tweaking it could look something like this you can tell there's a huge difference between this and the previous version because of that lighting difference hard light creates hard edges in the shadow soft light creates very faded shadows be sure though, in both cases, the closer to the subject, the darker they get. And Vado Elements, ladies and gentlemen, has had a huge rebrand. The logo and website are completely new and they look fantastic, super clean and, well, much more modern, if we're honest. But worry not, because the content of this platform still is identical, millions upon millions of digital assets. And there's loads of stuff even beyond the stock photos and 3D assets I've been using today. I mean, take this logo animation, for example, that is from Envato Elements. And this font as well. And there are loads more categories. For example, where did you think this music is from? Hmm? 
It is easy to say they have a lot of stuff, of course, but at the end of the day, it's all about quality and where it gets you. For me personally, over the years, Envato allowed me to make content quicker, better, and most of all, more fun. It's kind of a source of inspiration most of the time. You get unlimited access, yes, you heard that right, unlimited access to everything they have for just $16 a month with an annual subscription. That is a steal. Be quick, check it out down below, then now let's get to the next one. Now let's have some more fun with this. Here I have a road with no direct sunlight. The sun has gone down too far for it to hit this road. So you already know we're gonna need some soft shadows. I thought it'd be cool to add this sports car to this road and I will flip it because as you can see in the background, the light is coming from the right. And even though there is no direct sunlight, it's still nice if it kind of matches with the car. Also, you can tell on the car there technically is direct sunlight over here, but we're just gonna pretend that's not there. It's not too obvious anyway. Just like previously, a new adjustment layer exposure make that a whole lot darker like so invert the mask and with our very soft and flat brush we'll go ahead and paint underneath this car and we'll start at the points where it's actually touching the road over here fades out to nothingness on the sides kind of something like this we're gonna do that exact thing for every single tire and the ones at the back as well when you've done that it looks a lot better already but something is still off now you can make a separate adjustment layer for this to come split these up i like to do that sometimes so just the same thing again invert the mask and this time we're gonna paint the entire area underneath the car because guess what no light hits that whatsoever and don't be afraid to make this really really dark. You can always just experiment with it, you can always erase it, so just go crazy for it. All the way to the front over here and there. Does that not look 20 times better? Now if you think I might have overdone it, you can always just play around with the sliders as well. Maybe adding some contrast. See, that looks pretty good. And once again, same thing to the car, make sure it is clipped. Invert the mask and this time we're gonna paint on the car itself, mainly near below. We just wanna add a slightly darker um, effect because the light is not hitting this side of the car as much as the other. Here you go, before and after. Now this of course is just the shadows, color grading could make this look even better. You get the idea. It is just looking a lot better than without any of this. Before and after. Now, what if you had something similar, except this time there is harsh sunlight? How will you determine the shape of the shadow? Well, let me tell you at first, this is definitely going to be a bit of a guess. Let me first add some slight contrast to this car because it's a bit off. Possibly some color grading as well, just for a very slight tone. But then for the shadow part, <laughs> once again, the same thing. This time, however, it is going to be slightly trickier. Let's first go ahead and create the ambient shadow, the very dark touching shadow just underneath the wheels with our soft brush. And the whole lower side in general has to be super dark because no light hits this whatsoever. And the front here too. I'm also going to make this side of the car a bit darker already because it's very clear the light comes from the right. We can even see the sun over here. Look, this is before and this is after. Just a lot darker on this side mainly. But then the shadow of this car. As you can see, the sun is very low, meaning the shadow is going to be very long. The light hits this point, which goes all the way, like, I don't know, here. This once again, isn't precise, just a bit of a guess. Then you can put that same line on the top of the windshield, on the spoiler, and then you end up with them. Um with this, you can kind of play around with the sliders in this case. Now, technically, there should be a way to erase these really highlighted pieces, which of course are sunlight. Those technically can't be there. There are, of course, various ways you can use to try and hide them. This video isn't about removing those kind of things, just the shadows. So for now, let's just focus on that. This already kind of looks like something, but let me tell you, I struggle with this too. It's always gonna look just slightly weird. The further back it goes, you can just slightly fade it out maybe. And really, this is just tweaking it until it looks like something you like. But let me say it again, this is how I do it. I I'm not sure if this is 100% accurate. Everybody has their own ways of doing stuff like this. So really, if you find this useful, make sure to use it. If you don't, then please don't. All things considered though, here is before and here is after. Now, this is just an example I thought could be fun because it has just a few spots that touch the, the wood. This again is neutral lighting, so no harsh shadows, no weirdly shaped shadows. But here it's important to make sure not to add shadows underneath this, for example, because guess what? That doesn't actually touch the wood. The only areas that touch the wood are this 
this and that. So that's where you want the harsh shadows to be. So once again, very low flow and very dark near the actual touching point. Then a very blurry, very vague shadow for the, the stick thingies. And the closer you get to the actual touching bit, the sharper it gets, the darker it gets. So it's just again, over here, it's gonna be very, very dark, almost black, in fact, there. And then here, once again, fade out and fade back in. Bit of a weird way of saying it, but it's kind of what it is. And just like that, we're creating just a very subtle shadow. Here you go, before and after, very nice. Then finally, a bit of a bonus example, I guess. What if it is straight from above? And in these cases, it's very important to know which parts touch the wood or the background. In this case, for example, this part is touching. And let's say in the middle of this it is, everything else is floating above. Say this spoon was entirely flat, you could literally just do this. You could just make a drop shadow and change the direction like this. And then you would pretty much be done. But this looks decent to be fair but slightly off instead with these touching points in mind let's once again create a dark adjustment layer the light is coming pretty much from the left as you can tell here then let's begin over here uh, the shadow is just going around the round bit like so it's very close not touching but i see i think this is fine yeah then this part is actually a bit further away so that means the shadow is also going to be a bit further away from it and then here it slowly gets closer again meaning the shadow is going to be really dark and really close to it like so just around the edge let's turn this off so you can see the difference here where it touches there's just a really dark shadow right on that edge and then as you go further away from the table it kind of goes further away from the shadow as you can tell that it simply looks right like that so that is something very important to keep in mind the distance from the subject to what it's standing on laying on whatever there's the before and the after i hope these tips help this is how i've been doing my shadows for as long as i can remember so well then i guess that is pretty much it for today if you enjoyed this video make very sure to leave a like subscribe hit the bell not to miss a single future video and i hope i'll see you in the next one Thank you.